Hello everybody, my name is Tyler Way. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna talk about one of the secrets of structural engineering. One of the topics that a lot of people don't understand and a lot of people don't really teach you in school. It's crazy important, it's called structural resiliency and it's kind of the secret to everything. Before I get started though, I wanna say a big thanks to my watchers and subscribers, especially to Ali Hamad. Thank you, Ali, for your nice comments and thank you for watching my channel. As long as you keep watching and leaving comments, brother, I'll keep making videos. Please, like my videos, subscribe and leave a comment. Structural resiliency, what a crazy awesome topic. Have you ever noticed that if you look around at the world, that all kinds of systems of humans, of animals, they find ways to survive in extreme situations. We've got a perfect example of this in like reality television shows. Ha! For example, we put a group of humans, we trap them in a cave or on an island, and then they're going to work together as a group to adapt to their surroundings and survive. And this is called resiliency. It's that deep down spirit inside you that's not gonna give up, that's gonna find a way. Structures, believe it or not, behave in this same way. A structure will adjust to find ways to get help locally or globally to survive outside loads placed on it. When extreme events like earthquakes happen or bomb blasts or something like that, the structure is just fighting to say, you oh, have to keep going. And it will as long as it possibly can. And in each of these situations, the structure may be overloaded locally, but it's going to find a way to survive by shedding this load to other parts of the structure. And this sharing of load will continue until one of two things will happen. Either each part of the structure, it's at its limit. Every single part is at its limit. And then there'll be a group failure that happens sometimes. So it's not enough for one thing to be at its limit. It's enough for all of the things in the system to be at their limit. Or if one element of the structure gets so overloaded that it just fails as an individual. For example, for example, if you look at a family, let's say there's parents, and let's say there's children, and one of the parental units gets ill. They, they can't work. So what's going to happen? Is the family just going to give up? Of course not. The other parental unit is going to work harder. They might take a second job. They might have to work late at night. What are the kids going to do? They're going to start doing more of the chores around the house. They're going to start taking over for more responsibilities. They're going to start helping each other out. What if two parents get ill? Two of them are down. Are they going to give up? No. No. The kids are going to keep going. The kids are going to ask for help. They're going to ask for help from their neighbors, help from other family members. They're going to keep doing whatever they can. What if one of the kids also gets sick? Well, that last kid's going to be scrapping. They are going to have to do it all. They're going to be feeding the mom, feeding the dad, feeding the kid, keeping care of everybody, taking care of everything they possibly can. And they're going to keep going until all of them are at their limit. It's also, maybe sometimes it doesn't work that way. Sometimes one family member can just get so overloaded they can't handle it anymore. And that's another case when the system fails. They just can't handle it. They just, ah, it's over. Structures are the same way. I'm going to show you some examples coming up. They either work together as a group, distributing the load, asking for help until everyone's at their limits, or... Number two, they keep going until one member is so overloaded, it just breaks. But the only way this can happen 
the only way that this has a this ability to to ask for help can happen is if you use ductile materials. What does ductile material mean? Dun -da. It means a material that bends but doesn't break, or at least it doesn't break right off the bat. It's got some give to it. It can deflect and say, help me, please help me. That's what it does. And we can make concrete do that. We can make steel do that. We can make wood do that if we know what we're doing, okay? And that's why ductility is so important. Because you have to provide as many different load paths. Yeah, load paths. That's ways for the load to get out of the structure. That is the key to survival. Asking for help. That's what a load path does. And this resistance to failure is what I call structural resiliency. And we're going to see this behavior over and over and over again in the structural materials that we care about. You just have to know how to look for it. And there'll be several times you'll say, you'll be wondering, why does a material do this? Why does a structure do this? And if it's about resisting failure, it probably has to do with this topic. It probably has to do with structural resiliency. Let's start out with some examples. First, I'm showing you two beams, two beams. There's a beam DB and beam AC, and they're both loaded. Here's, here's the plan view, that's isometric, that's the plan view, the top view, bird's eye view. There's DB, and there's AC, and it's loaded, okay? So as you increase P, as you increase the load, what's gonna happen? Well, let's just say I start increasing P, piling on more and more load, more and more load, and the system starts moving, and the system starts deflecting, and AC, this smaller beam, it reaches its limit. It reaches what it can do, and it wants to break. It's like, no, I can't take anymore! Is the system going to be over? Is... Is it gonna fail? No, it's not. It's gonna keep going. It's gonna keep going until beam DB and beam AC are at their limit. They'll actually form something called a plastic hinge. I'll talk more about that coming up. And that, that's where this DB is at its limit and AC is at its limit. And then at that point, it forms something called a mechanism. Yeah. And then it will fail, right? It will fail. It will fail. AC will go down like this. DB will go down like this. And it's, it's over. It's game over. But we didn't stop when only one of the members was at its limit. Let's keep going. Let's talk about reinforced concrete. I'm showing you first a single member. This is kind of an idealized thing, but it's okay, hang with me. I've got this single member of concrete that's wrapped with a steel bar in the center. Now, I have this load P, I'm pulling on it, okay? And I'm showing you a couple different situations down here at the bottom. And I'm gonna draw, we're gonna draw a P versus deflection graph. Load versus deflection graph. So let's start out when the load is pretty low, P1. I'm going to keep increasing the load, keep increasing the load. This load's going to keep going up, going up, going up, going up until something happens, until a crack happens. You say, well, where's it going to crack? Well, it's actually going to crack wherever there's like an imperfection in the member. And it's probably not going to be near the edges. It's probably going to be in the middle about third, but it's going to crack somewhere in there. Let's just draw a crack happening about here. Is it over? Is that the end of this structure? Or can it keep going? Well, the load can't, the, the, steel, the, the concrete can't take any more, any more load, but the steel can. So it's going to keep going. Now, it might change stiffness. It may change slope. Stiffness is another word for slope on this curve. Okay? And stiffness means like how squishy something is or how much it bends or deflects from a, from a given amount of load. So it, it may change stiffness, 
But it's still going to keep going until that crack gets larger, right? Pretty large. And that steel is going to keep going until eventually that steel is going to reach its limit. Maybe we'd call it the yield. And then it's going to go flat. At least that's idealized what's going to happen. And I'm not going to talk about strain hardening, okay? Strain hardening would say eventually it would go up a little bit in strength and then it, then it, then it will break, okay? But this crack is going to get huge. And this steel is eventually going to deflect so much that it's at its yield, so we didn't fail when one material wasn't happy. We didn't even fail when one material was so unhappy that it had a huge crack in it. We failed until both materials were at their limit state. That's structural resiliency. You're still not convinced, right? You want to see another example? Okay, great. So I've drawn a picture here. Instead of one member in tension, uh, made out of concrete with one steel bar. Now I've got multiple steel bars, multiple steel bars. And I'm pulling here in the center. And we have our same P versus deflection graph. And here's P, okay? And as we start loading, as we start loading, um, it's gonna go just like we did before. It's gonna keep going. It's gonna have a pretty good stiffness to it. Everything is gonna be great. And then eventually it's gonna crack and say, well, Where's it going to crack? Well, somewhere in the middle third. Somewhere in the middle third. And probably somewhere here in the middle of the load. Small crack's going to happen. And when that happens, the stiffness is going to change, but not very much. Not very much. Okay, if this is... This might be P1. Okay. And it's going to keep going until the crack gets even larger, okay? Even larger. Heck, let's just go ahead and say the crack goes all the way across, just for fun. Now, we had one bar really in tension here, and then, but this load also has another load path. The load can also travel in this direction. So, that crack is going to want to extend, 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 and get wider and wider and wider. And eventually it'll zip all the way across the entire member. And now all of these bars are actually working together. And the crack there, if we could zoom in on the crack, we would see like a bar at the top. I'm sorry, crack. Here's a bar. We have a crack like that. Okay. And this crack, as we get wider, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, because the majority of the load is coming through here. Less of the load is coming on the outside. Even, even less load is coming on the outside. But again, it's all working together. It's all working together as a system to resist and see what's going on. And eventually, it's going to keep going, and that crack is going to be interesting. That crack's going to get wider in the middle, and then smaller, and then wider in the middle, and then smaller, but that structural system, that system isn't going to break unless, unless, it's not over, unless either all of them are at their limit or one of them. Let's just say the bar in the center here. Let's say this bar in the center gets so overloaded, so overloaded that it fractures, that it breaks. And therefore, all of the load, all of the load that was in that center bar is immediately transferred to the bars around it. It's like, boom, all the load goes everywhere else. And then we have to see, can it take it or not? If these were already pretty stressed from all the load coming up from the outside and the outside, that bar breaking may be enough to send it over the edge. It may be enough to just cause them all to break and all break. It'd be like, bam. Bam, 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 bam. They all break like a chain reaction, like a domino effect. And this is an example of the second part of structural resiliency, where one member gets so overloaded that it breaks and then the system can't take it anymore. The system can't handle it. And if you look around you, when you take your, your actual structures classes, and when you look at structural failure all around you, 
it behaves, it follows this criteria. Either we keep going until everything reaches its limit or until one member gets so overloaded that it fails and breaks, sending everything else over the edge. Hey, thank you so much. Take care.